Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now welcome back. So this uh, this lecture, it is just a continuation of the earlier one. So I have kept uh, the algorithm on the board as it is. Now I try to implement in the MATLAB. So now, so it is not much different from our previous uh, numerical simulation. So I have my x minimum is minus one, x maximum is two the parameter so i guess start with 100 points so i have my delta x is uh, 3 by n so my h i take 3 times 1 times delta x so i consider t final is 1 because the initial condition what i have used so i have uh, consider here a t is equal to 1 the solution breaks so i tell you what the solution breaks means because we get uh, so the solution is constant along the characteristics it means so if two characteristics meet each other one constant coming from here so another constant is coming from here then at this point we have two solution so there is, you cannot at the same time you cannot have the two solution so that means there is a breaking time and now i start with the time integ so integration here so I compute the neighbor in order to find. So at the moment, first we don't have to do anything. So I don't have to compute the neighbor. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. So if I am in the, so I am fully in the Lagrange form. Yeah. So what I have in the Lagrangian formulation that I just have to update the position and the the, the density. The old is uh, new is as old. Nothing. I don't have to do anything. Then, once I move the particle, so I have to do the particle management, adding or removing point. That's all. Let us check the solution here. So, we see that we produce the exact solution. Yeah. In this case, up to a t is equal to 1 here, you have a t is equal to 1, so we have the exact solution. So maybe I just, uh, so I am a little bit far from 0 0.005, therefore, so my, I have little bit 1, but we have the exact solution, t is equal to 1. Now, what does it mean, for example, if I have, let me take my time t is equal to 1.5. What will happen? Yeah, because the solution breaks at t is equal to 1. So now, if t is equal to 1.5, do you, what do you expect? Do you expect a blow up? Or there is oscillation after t is equal to 1? So let us say what will happen. What does it mean? So at t is equal to 1, we had a shock, means discontinuity. And now what happened that, so I am going further. So what does it mean? So t is equal to 1, I am going further. It means that my solution here is going something like that. Yeah? So this is my row. If I look at this position, I have solution here, solution here. At this point, I have two solutions. This is one solution, this is another solution. Until here, what I had, I had the shock. At t is equal to 1, my solution was, our solution was this discontinuity. Yeah? It was 1 up to there, and suddenly it was 0 here. But now, when t is equal to 1.5, so we got, if 
I am looking at this point, I have two solutions. If I am looking at this point, I have also one solution here, one solution here. So we cannot have double solution at the same time. So that means that if I am sitting at this point or here itself, so I have one solution here, one solution here. If I am sitting at this point here, that x is equal to 1.205, then I have one, when I draw the line, there is one solution. And if I go further, I have two solutions. So that is the meaning of this, uh, the breaking uh, time. So two characteristics because the solution is constant along the characteristics means if there are two characteristics coming, so one characteristic bring one constant solution and another characteristic bring another constant solution. At certain time, more than t is equal to one, they cross each other and at that point we have two solutions. That is not possible. Yeah. So that means that is a breaking time. So here you can really see that what the meaning of breaking time. And now, so here we got the exact solution. Only we had to do the particle management, just adding or removing a particle. Other than that, we don't have to do anything. So even we don't have to source any neighbor. Yeah. So no need to compute derivative. Now let us come to the ALA formulation here. ALA formulation is uh, without artificial, without numerical di diffusion. Thus, I compute the first order derivative with respect with, uh, of rho with the central difference formula. So, I guess that I will have the oscillation like in the finite difference case. Let us check. Yeah, it is start always the oscillation. You see? So, this is due to the central difference effect of our solution. So, once more, the oscillation is start not in the beginning, but after a certain time. Even the solution was continuous, in the initial solution was continuous, but the oscillation is started. Yeah, so we got the oscillation. So what do we do in order to avoid the oscillation? We apply, as in finite difference, we apply the backward. Backward means we sort out the neighbor which are on the left part or on the right part according to the direction of rho. So everything same, same setup. So only difference is that once I have my neighbor, so I have to look, I have to sort it out again, whether they are according to the direction, whether they are on the left or on the right. And once I have that new neighbor, depending on the left and right side, so I compute the derivative. And then I update my position here with 0 0.5 times delta t. And then I update my new velocity exactly with this formula here, or with this formula without this part. Yeah. Now let us see that whether we get a stable solution. After update, I update my new position and new density. Again, do the particle management. So see, because this part is going faster, yeah, the velocity one there, it is decreasing. So this on the from the left, they are going faster, and there on the right, they are slower. It means you have always the overlapping. Therefore, you remove one of them. You don't need both because they may cluster at one point. Therefore, there the particle management is necessary. Then in some case, we may have also to add that some point if it is necessary. And now let us see the solution here. We hope we get a stable solution. Yeah, we got a stable solution. Like in the first case, what we had, we had the exact solution. So let us see if I don't have any ALA formulation at time t is equal to 1.0. So we have the exact solution. Yeah. But if I have my opening scheme, so with the central difference, 
we have oscillation now if we do the upwinding we have a stable solution but we have the numerical diffusion here because exact solution is on this corner but here we have smoothed out so that is the effect of the first order scheme because we have computed the derivative with the first order so in this case we don't have any derivative here so we have not committed any mistake while simulating while updating new row but here updating new row we have approximated the first derivative with the first order so that at every time step we have committed the mistake then that error and that error when the time evolves will accumulate and further what we get that uh, the solution is far from the exact solution and now let me add this part here yeah so whether we get the same type of numerical diffusion but we solve it with the central difference with the second order yeah so now we come to the diffusion part here at the the numerical diffusion i add the numerical diffusion epsilon d2 by dx square d2 rho by dx square here so here i compute the second order derivative here i get 2 by 2 matrix because in the first order i had a 1 by 1 matrix so i have my now so my the computation of the new position is same as before nothing changes but the computation of this one is what i have seen that i have added this row i have added this dt times epsilon times second order derivative so dt so here plus again we should have delta t here yeah so delta t times epsilon times second order pass a derivative and then that's all the other particle management are the same let us check the solution so it is even more diffusion here diffusion on the left as well as on the right but at least with the upwinding we do not have much diffusion here yeah let us come here let's go again with the upwinding scheme So at least we have sharp discontinuity here on the right part of the sock, but on the there is small the diffusion here. But when we add the diffusion coefficient, so we have the diffusion on the top as well as on the bottom. Yeah. So let us see what was our epsilon here. So our epsilon was here delta x by two. So what will happen if I take delta x by four? In the linear advection case, it was not working with the delta x by three, but now let us check whether it is better here. No idea. It's better here. So with delta x by three, is I'm getting even sharper. So delta x by two was larger. So now let us check with delta x by four. Still, we may get the stable solution. Uh, you see now it is start little bit oscillating so our this uh, numerical diffusion coefficient is little bit smaller but we are still on the border so in this case we are better than the upwinding scheme it is due to the central difference yeah and now we come to the viscous burger equation so what will be the viscous burger equation so in the viscous burger equation we don't have this first order partial derivative we have only the second order partial derivative so i have to define the epsilon in the beginning it is not there is no any depending upon the delta x in this case it was somehow i have to choose according to the size of the the distance between two particles but here i just give the constant value and then i guess that 
the solution numerical solution of viscous barrier equation should tends to yeah we just take that phenomena whether we get that yeah so first let us start with the large viscosity so what will happen so even with a large viscosity we got nice solution so it is even not large it is still small enough so let us start with 0.5 what will happen so what i am running i am in viscous burger here i have not changed here i have to give the epsilon oh it is very large because i told you that if if you take the large viscosity then your delta t cannot be the restricted from the cfl condition somehow you have to choose delta t as a function of the advection velocity and the diffusion yeah so the viscosity so here the viscosity is too large so we cannot take now so now maybe 0.1 should be already large enough or 0.2 is start so it's still large you get oscillation let us come down to 0.1 So zero point one is fine. We got very smooth solution. Now we decrease. Now we try to see this phenomena when epsilon tends to zero. The numerical solution of this viscous Burger equation should converge to the the original Burger equation. There we know the exact solution. So this blue line is the exact solution. now i let me decrease uh, my my viscosity by again by factor 10 so we should get closer now you see it is more closer let me take another factor 10 smaller so we get even sharper and sharper so still you have very small a small diffusion here due to the epsilon so what will happen now i take even smaller just i take half of that try the half of 0.001 it means 0.0005 so what will happen so still you see now is very close so once more decrease so take 01 maybe in that case perhaps it is too small because it is central difference so we may get oscillation after certain time this epsilon cannot control the central difference oscillation so it's still now so now we are exact almost yeah now what we can see that when the epsilon tends to zero so my epsilon is you look at here my epsilon is equal to 0.0001 it is very small so in that case what we see that our it's much better than this scheme because here we got the oscillating solution when my delta the epsilon was less than delta x by 4 but here what we got that it is delta x is what is delta x delta x is 3 by 100 it is 0.03 so if i take 0.03 here so i get so let us say with 0.03 here what we had in a viscous form so is with 0.03 so we have this form 
So now let us check with the artificial viscosity of 0.03. Now let us give Burger equation with the numerical diffusion. So I just give you instead of delta x, let us see 0.03 whether we get similar solution. Yeah, just remember. So we are somehow this much distance far from the exact solution. Let me check it here whether we get. Uh, so it is almost same, yeah, because this part is also second order approximation. This part also second order approximation. If I have this first order and the second order, then I would get much diffuse solution. But here, this is also second order approximation. This is also second order approximation, and there is of course second order approximation. Therefore, we got the similar solution. So again, let me run. Viscous Burger equation. Yeah. So now let us start with end the initial condition. What will happen? So I just change my initial condition something like that. So if I just take like sine function, what we had. So if x is less than zero, I may have zero. If 0 to 1, I may have here sine of pi times x and rest 0. I think I had taken my domain minus 3 to 3. So here in this case, my exact solution will be. It's different. I have to reconstruct the exact solution. So this is not the same as the linear profile. So here I don't want to compute the exact solution. Let us check what will happen. So if it is sine function, what we get again? We get something like this uh, discontinuity here. Yeah. So use more point to see the better. Resolution. So we get a little bit sharp here. So when I use the exact Burger equation, the original one, what I get that, so this is the diffuse one. So I consider the full Lagrangian form of Burger equation. So I take minus three to three, and I comment the exact solution here. Oh. Did not. I have to change the initial value. I am taking the same. So I have to take this sine function, not this was my mistake. So I take this sine function. So you see here. I am going farther than the breaking time. So what is my breaking time? So breaking time is, you remember, T star was 1 over minus a minimum of, so it is, there was still minimum of rho 0 and 0, something like that, yeah? So what is rho zero? What is the derivative of rho zero? So the derivative of rho zero is equal to if I have a sine function here, zero sine function zero, then I will have zero sine pi x zero. The derivative is zero. The derivative of sine pi x is pi times sine cosine x. So minimum of this is equal to minus one. 
so here is a minus 1, so minus minus plus pi times, this is the, the minimum is minus pi, so it is, is a plus pi, 1 over pi, so 1 over pi is my t star, yeah, so what is 1 over pi, I have to give my final time 1 over pi, so that I get my, so t final is, I should have 1.0, divided by pi, so that is my breaking time, let us see at that time we should get the discontinuity, so you see this is already the discontinuity here, so if I take more point we will see the real discontinuity, so let, us, let me take like 500 point, yeah, so we have the discontinuity here, okay, so if I go further, like one, what we have that, so I get, because the characteristics are crossing, so at this point I get multi-valued function, so I get multi, multiple value, if I am sitting at this point, I have one solution here, one solution here, yeah, is a double value, in that case, you don't have any solution. So you can play with different initial condition. So you can take even full sine function, take larger domain, so that the one part goes to the right, then, then below, they goes to the left. If you take the larger 0 0.5 pi sine x, then you have the full, the wave, then one part goes to the left, and one part goes to the right, then it will the shock will develop one in the right, one in the left, uh, and so you, this is the exercise for you. You can do yourselves. You assigning different initial value. I hope you got a good uh, impression, a good uh, knowledge. So you can. I, I hope that you should be able to produce the MATLAB code or any C, C plus plus or other language, Fortran. Uh, so or Python, so please do the programming, follow the lecture and the reproduce the result and the match with the analytical solution if it is available so that you are sure your code is working, it is stable and um, then you can do more complicated simulation where you cannot construct the exact solution, you just consider your scheme provide the correct solution if you know the analytical solution. If you don't know, then apply to the problem where you don't know the analytical solution, just trusting your code. So I think we stop uh, this, this part today. So next, uh, so I will continue with the uh, other equation in the coming next lecture. So I think we stop it now. So thank you very much for your attention.